This is everything you need to finally understand gut health. Gut health should be simple, but the internet turned it into chaos. So I stripped out the nonsense and built one clear, complete guide. And if you stick till the end, there's a free 7-day gut reset challenge waiting for you. Before we go further, what even is the gut? Most people think it's just the stomach, but it's the whole digestive path starting from your mouth all the way to your brat. Its main job is to break down food, absorb nutrients, and push out whatever's left. But it's more than this. Your gut is packed with trillions of microbes, bacteria, fungi, and viruses. It's a mix of good and chaotic microbes. So what does good gut health actually mean? It means you've got diversity in those microbes, and the balance between the good and bad ones stays steady. And why does gut health matter? Because it's not just digestion. Your gut and brain constantly talk, and that affects mood, stress, cravings, sometimes even behavior. It doesn't stop there. Most of your immune system is based in the gut. So when the gut is irritated, your body reacts. Inflammation, sensitivities, random flare-ups. Even your skin can reflect it. A calm gut often shows up as calm skin. And a lot more. So let's get started. The single biggest mistake is eating the same 8 to 10 foods every day. It looks clean, but it quietly shrinks your good bacteria. Different gut bacteria use different fibers. That's all prebiotic means. Food for the good bacteria to keep them alive. If you eat the same foods every day, some microbes never get fed and fade out. And when you give them fiber to work with, they ferment it into SCFA, short-chain fatty acids. These SCFA feed colon cells, strengthen the gut lining, reduce inflammation, calm the immune system, and even help brain function. About 30 different plants a week is the sweet spot. Sounds wild, but it's basically just 4 to 5 a day. Fruits, veggies, nuts, seeds, whole grains, they all count. Research shows the gut works better at 30 to 40 grams of fiber a day. And remember, fiber only does its thing if you're hydrated. Otherwise, <laughs> once you feed the microbes you have, the next move is adding more good ones. Fermented foods give you probiotics. Live good bacteria. They are basically goaded for your gut. And honestly, Koreans figured this out way before gut health TikTok existed. Kimchi, fermented soups, side dishes. It's just normal there. There's even a crossover study showing the Korean diet had higher gut diversity and more beneficial bacteria compared to typical American diets. So, if you nail variety, fiber, water, and a little fermented food, your gut will handle the rest. Every week, there's a new food to fear and a new diet to worship. One month, everyone's terrified of seeds. Next month, it's lectins, oxalates, gluten, dairy, fruit for sugar, nuts, grains, breakfast, carbs, basically everything. Suddenly, half the internet is eating six foods max and calling it healing. A lot of these foods are actually really nutritious. Sure, some people need to avoid them for medical reasons, but most don't. They just saw a scary post and cut out entire food groups overnight. The same thing happens with diet trends. Keto, carnivore, one meal a day, fruit-only diets, and so on. The issue isn't trying them. It's staying extreme long enough to starve your gut and tank your fiber intake. Before cutting foods or following a protocol, ask yourself, do I actually feel worse when I eat this? Did a test diagnose me with an intolerance? Can I do this long term without tanking my gut diversity? If the answers make sense and your body agrees, then yeah, you're good to go. Our gut evolved with nature, fresh food, outdoor exposure, and diverse microbes. But in the last hundred years, everything changed. Food, medicine, and the way we interact with our environment, and our gut hasn't caught up. Let's start with the obvious. Food. Ultra-processed food isn't just low in fiber, it's engineered. It contains emulsifiers and stabilizers your gut doesn't recognize as food. Research shows these additives can damage the protective mucus layer in your gut. The same layer your good bacteria live in. And when that barrier thins, microbial populations start to crash, pro-inflammatory bacteria rise, and the production of beneficial SCFA drops. Then there's antibiotics, absolute lifesavers, and they kill the infection. Yes, but they also wipe out entire neighborhoods of beneficial bacteria. And while the microbes try to rebuild afterward, it doesn't always grow back the same. And finally, our environment. We didn't evolve in sanitized apartments. We evolved outdoors, touching grass, animals, plants, microbes. That exposure used to be normal. Now we've gone all in on antibacterial everything. Sanitizers, disinfectants, hypersterile indoor living. Good for preventing disease, not so good for building microbial diversity. We didn't evolve with processed food, constant antibiotics, or sanitizer. Now, that doesn't mean you should stop medicine or hygiene. Just avoid the overuse. But this is worth ditching completely. 
All right, that's your gut fix explained. If you want to put this into action, I made a free 7-day challenge in a simple PDF, link below. If you're joining the challenge, drop I'm in in the comments. And yeah, subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.